Thank you. Seven for the Sawyer family? Thank you, Betsy. Well, thank you. Have a good time. We better get these to the booth. Fine. Say, uh, why don't we just wander a bit, huh? Okay, there. Sounds good. We're going to build something for you. Coming right up. Hi. Thank you. This, this one's thank balloon you. number one for your left hand. You know, of all the stuff in your great-great-granddad's barn, I'll, I'll bet you he liked this the least. But it's so cool. The blade looks so sharp. You never had to use one. You know, we're talking about your great-great-grandpa, William. Daddy's got his picture in the living room. Mm -hmm. You ever talk about that much? Every harvest. Just one day of bringing in the crop with the scythe and sickle, you'd think your arms would fall right off. By the end of the day, you couldn't raise them above your head. It might be weeks bringing in a crop. Lucky for farmers everywhere, there were people working just as hard to build us some better tools. By the middle of the 19th century, the primary tool of the harvest was still the scythe. With a strong back and a stronger will, a farmer could cut up to two acres a day. Two men helped transform this agrarian landscape which had remained unchanged for centuries. While separately they built two of the most powerful agricultural products companies in the world, they shared a common commitment. They would make it their business to understand what farmers needed to improve their lifestyle, their yield, and their bottom line. Then they would design, develop, build, and deliver products that would best suit those needs. Jerome Increase Case grew up on his father's farm, where he operated a crude device called a groundhog thresher. After five seasons of working the machine, he knew he could improve it. He founded his company in 1842 on the basis of those improvements, and soon couldn't make the machines fast enough to keep up with the orders. Case never saw himself as an inventor. His success was founded in the hard work necessary to be the link between the inventors and the farmers. His unshakable honesty and commitment to quality were legendary. In 1884, a case thresher on a Minnesota farm would not live up to its performance promise, despite the efforts of the local dealer and a plant mechanic. Case sent word to the farmer that he would be arriving by train to fix the thresher himself. Case tinkered with the machine for hours until the sun began to set. Finally, he asked the farmer for a can of kerosene. Case doused the thresher and set it on fire. Before the fire went out, Case was back on the train. Within 24 hours, the farmer had a new Case thresher operating in peak condition. J.I. Case set the standard for his company that still exists today by refusing to disappoint even one customer with a product that bore his name. During that same period of time, in a quiet Virginia Valley, another pioneer was preparing to change the course of agricultural history. Like Jerome Case, Cyrus Hall McCormick also grew up on his father's farm. There, he developed the first successful mechanical device to harvest grain, the McCormick Reaper. He was only 22 in 1831 when he gave the first public demonstration of the Reaper. He learned an important lesson that day, one that would take his ideas and his company far. Farmers knew their work and they knew their minds. They wouldn't change their centuries-old lifestyle for the first newfangled contraption that came along. There was nothing as reliable as a good scythe man with the determination to get the crop in. It would take Cyrus McCormick a decade of refining and modifying his original design before the farming community began to take notice. The Reaper was finally mass-produced for distribution throughout the grain states and eastern Canada in 1855. In those days, most sales were for cash, but Cyrus McCormick sold on credit, one-third down, and the rest due after the harvest. McCormick's products were the first ever to carry a warranty. At a time when a faulty product was most often the consumer's problem, McCormick offered a money-back guarantee if his machine did not cut 15 acres a day and save a bushel of wheat an acre. 
The guarantee was backed by other innovations, such as knowledgeable service and replacement parts available locally. The word got around. Cyrus McCormick was on the side of the farmer. He understood the farmer. And so the last of the skeptics were induced to buy. Once the agricultural community embraced the machine age, Case and McCormick poured their energy into creating more powerful and more efficient machines. The Industrial Revolution brought a new generation of farm machinery, the Harvester Thresher, otherwise known as the Combine. The ability to gather, thresh, and separate grain all in one pass once again revolutionized the industry. It's hard work farming. No way around that. You might put in a whole season for just a few dollars, and you're always looking for a way to grow a little more and make a little more. Now getting a new piece of equipment, that was a big deal, especially when you got one that was built right, and you knew it when you had something good. You felt proud knowing you were putting more food on your table and the world's table to boot. Look at these buttons. These yeah, are wait a old. Minute. These go way back. Look at this. That looks pretty old. It was great, great grandpa Williams. I've been carrying this for years. Is it worth any money? <laughs> I guess it's worth a lot more than money. Why don't you put it in a bank? <laughs> it's not the kind of thing you keep in a bank. And it's not the kind of thing you keep forever, but but you gotta find the right person to give it to. I'll tell you, this, there's a whole history here, yeah, Dad. I've, I've never seen anything like this, No, son. really. Now, look at this one. This goes back to 1930. Looks like he's ready to take over. More ready than you were. Well, I remember it took some convincing. Ha! <laughs> more like arm twisting. Well, I've been around combines all of my life. And this one was more than a little bit different. I mean, a, a man gets used to one thing, it's hard to change. Your ornery, that's all. Well, it beats anything I'd ever seen. I mean, I've been working with conventional combines all of my life. And you were never happy about it. Yeah, but sometime that grass bar would beat the crops to death. And you lost plenty with the straw walkers. And it was even more trouble when it was wet. Well, trying to pull 40% corn in with a conventional combine is like trying to eat sweet corn with your gums. <laughs> <laughs> and you were always working on it. Yeah, but all those moving parts. You know, your mother used to say that I, I spent more time with that combine than I did with her. Are you saying that Mama has fewer working parts? She was a lot less trouble, you know? <laughs> huh? And always has been. <laughs> well, look who's oh, here. Samuel. Dave, how are you? Hi, Dave. James, how are you? Good to see you. Hi, Hi. Adam. How Dave, I was just reminding this old man how hard it is to change his mind. Well, how was I supposed to know that Dave here was working on it? I thought they put somebody on it that never even saw a tractor. Dad. Dave was an Illinois farm boy, right? Oh, that's right. <laughs> and you had a very good idea. Well, it really wasn't my idea, but I did have a chance to work on it. In 1969, I joined the company and began working as a member of the Axia Flow development team. Several people had worked with the concept prior to that. They knew conventional combines had many problems, even the ones International was making at that time. For instance, these machines used a straight-in crop feeding principle. The crop entered a cross-mounted cylinder that just couldn't make full use of the concave. Crop only passed between the rasp bars and the concaves one time. If the grain was not thrashed in that first pass, it was lost. Another limitation of the conventional design was the straw walkers, because they used gravity for separation. At high crop throughputs, and especially when the crop was wet, we got high losses. The axial flow rotor replaced the conventional cylinder and straw walkers. The crop could now pass between the rasp bars and the concave several times on its way through the combine. We got excellent results. The crop thrashed and separated much more efficiently. Plus, the centrifugal force separated the grain from the straw much better than with straw walkers and gravity. We also determined that the axial flow was gentler to the crop and that resulted in a higher quality grain sample. When we replaced the conventional system with a single rotor and a single drive system, it resulted in fewer moving parts and less maintenance. We also knew the farmers wanted to use this machine on more than one crop. 
often during the same day, so crop changeover was made easy as well. The axial flow turned out to be a good design that separated the grain from the stalk as efficiently and gently as possible. The man who thought of everything. Well, there were a lot of people that worked on this project. Here, let me show you. Axial flow really was fantastic and interesting because it was a, a uh, engineer's dream in that it was, you had to be creative, you had to use the engineering principles, and a lot of good, hard work involved along the way too, I'll tell you. Probably the biggest problem we had with the uh, a conventional combine is that it is a one-pass threshing system, therefore you could not thresh all the grain, and or you cracked too much of the grain. And second thing, you couldn't separate it efficiently in certain conditions, real high moisture conditions and so forth. The use of straw walkers or straw racks uh, were very poor at separating grain when you try to put high capacity through them. I don't like reciprocating motion in a machine. It shakes itself apart. And when you're trying to do the thrashing job, you had to be so aggressive with a conventional cylinder. You had one, one try at it, and if you didn't get it separated from the stock, well, then it was going out the back of the machine. One year we got to thinking, why don't we make one big rotor and put it in a combine, take the straw racks out, and go from there. And so we began lab testing. We had nothing but just the rotor, the cage, and electric motor. And then we started going from there. We had the rotor and the cage laying horizontal on the floor. And we'd drop ears of corn and bundles of grain in, kind of one at a time, to see how the uh, flow was, and so on and so forth. Studying the high-speed movies, of which we took 8, 10, 12 rolls of film. We processed them at night and brought them in and studied them every morning and came to a consensus of what we needed to improve flow of material and feed in those areas. I know at least five or six different designs that were attempted before we got down to what we, the basis of what we have today. The first several years they were building models of them, I never saw one. Uh, even though it was built in the same plant in the same department. Well, there were two distinct departments, uh, product engineering and test and development engineering, which quite often is shortened to just test engineering. But test and development engineering had the capability and in some cases the responsibility to do quite a bit of development work in addition to product, and they worked hand in hand. Uh, there was almost always somebody from both departments with the machine, either in the lab or in the field. Uh, there might have been momentary friction over should we move to the right or the left, but there never was much friction over should we move ahead. Engineers, both test and design, uh, have a tendency to say, I can do better, and it's not ready yet. And we'd spend a lot of time and a lot of money on this project, and, and uh, probably in the engineering group we were saying, hey guys, uh, we can do better than this, we're not quite ready. The company was saying, it's, it's time to go, guys. The old saying, you finally have to shoot the engineer and get in production with it, and that's, that's kind of where you get to with it. We got an awful lot of very favorable letters from farmers who used those first 300. Uh, they were volunteer letters uh, thanking us for, for putting out this new line. Now you've got it in the hands of, of other users who live in a different environment than we do. Uh, that led to the development of uh, the specialty rotor. And the specialty rotor really took a lot of the sensitivity out of tough conditions in all crops, and so it became more of an all-crop machine. The farmers will tell you, you know, they're the ones that, you know, really have to tell you if we did our job or not, but, you know, uh, low grain loss, uh, crackage, get more out of the field. Those are all things. I mean, we kind of proved it to ourselves, but, you know, we don't buy combines. Farmers are not bashful. If it's not good, they'll tell you that very plainly. But if it's good, they'll tell you that too, so. The uh, 2188 today probably has close to twice the capacity of a 1480. The dimensional interiors on this machine are still about the same. The rotor itself is, is the same length, the same diameter. The, the concaves have a little more wrap, so they have a little more separation area. The cleaning system got a little longer. But out of that same package, we've almost doubled what this machine can do. 
if you don't have uh, many moving parts and you don't have many chains, you don't have many belts, you don't have many idlers, you don't have many bearings. You just are simply a very simple machine. If I don't have many parts, it's got to be a lower maintenance machine. And it is. This is the only machine of this particular concept that has succeeded in, in this, this whole arena in the last hundred years. We all kind of had that feeling that we were part of some initial history that, you know, would only be once in a lifetime. We'd never experience it again. You don't get a product uh, such as this without a lot of help. And all these people helped and helped tremendously. They were equal in every effort of getting there. They were just a tremendous help. Talked to two customers that had, each one of them had still had one of the originals. One of them was still using it. We tried to tell him it was time to buy a new one. He said it just wouldn't wear out. He, he wasn't gonna, gonna trade it. Nothing works for 20 years, except farmers. And that machine I talked you into. You know, I'll never forget the first time I saw it work. It uh, saves more grain, handles it better, mm -hmm. more gentle, and uh, we ended up with a higher yield. Hey. Huh? Isn't that something? <laughs> hey, Adam. Hi. I'll get some popcorn. OK. See you later, guys. All right. Bye, Bye boy. You're not going to talk combines all day, are you? Uh, well. I guess we're going to have to walk a bit, huh? Okay. I'm going to go find Daniel. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here, uh... Hmm? Here's a little something I, uh... I'd like you to take with you. Hmm? You've had this a long time, haven't you? Well, it's... It's not for keeping, it's... for passing on. Huh? Mm -hmm. Come on, boy. Sure is pretty. Needs to be. Yeah, you got that right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of hard work in that little handful of seeds, son. Well, Mother Nature doesn't want you to have it. It's hers. So she makes it as hard as she can for you to get it. <laughs> and if you try too hard, you can hurt what you work for. Tear that skin right off. Mm -hmm. Then it's open to all kinds of diseases, infections. Yeah, and you remember that time that corn bin went bad on us? Mm -hmm. It was probably just a handful of bad seed. Something latches on when it's not protected. You get a hot spot in the bin, and it starts to spread. Mm -hmm. Look at these. All different. Mm. The size is different. The skin's different. Well, the plant's different to begin with. Yeah. The soil, the climate. Changing crops and crop conditions requires a flexible threshing and separating system. At the heart of the axial flow combine is the patented rotor. When it comes to threshing and separating, this rotary design sets the standard by which all combines are measured. Multiple pass threshing with the axial flow combine rotor allows complete threshing to occur without crop damage. The feeder on the Axial Flow Combine allows a thick mat of material to flow into the threshing area. This mat helps cushion the crop from damaging moving parts. Grain flows easily and gently into the rotor through a transition cone located on the front of the rotor. The cone increases the crop speed as well as draws air into the threshing area. This airflow technique keeps dust away from the feeder face, unlike conventional combines that sometimes have visibility trouble due to boiling dust. Rasp bars attached to the rotor spin within the rotor cage to ensure effective threshing and separating, while spiral transporting vanes help move the crop quickly through the rotor cage for efficient separation. The single inline rotor is the only moving part used to thresh and separate grain versus the 16 moving parts used in a conventional combine. This centrifugal action is far more effective than gravity alone, allowing the heavy grain to make it through the lighter residual material. This action extracts more grain while providing a significant boost to quality. After the grain leaves the rotor cage, it enters the cleaning and conveying section. 
This step, like every step in an axial flow combine, is built to work in perfect synchronization with the one before, a principle known as capacity matching. The cross-flow cleaning fan incorporates a patented chevron pattern design that delivers an extremely uniform airflow throughout the entire sieve area, as opposed to the high and low pressure air pockets of other designs. Key to this performance is the ability of the fan to create a vortex in its center, drawing in and sending out large volumes of air. This innovation not only provides far better grain cleaning, but is also much quieter and requires less horsepower. With the cross-flow fan, the total cleaning system adapts to changes in crops and conditions with less need for adjustments. The result is maximum yields of top quality grain. In the field, the axial flow combines are unmatched. Focalized cab mounting gives the operator a comfortable ride by separating him from the bouncing and jarring in the field. The cab features a roomy, high visibility environment that literally conforms to you. The first thing you'll notice is the view. Glass surrounds the front and sides of the cab. This provides amazing visibility of your surroundings, including a totally unobstructed view of the header. You could easily look down into the crop or up over the horizon. Your view of the grain tank is unobstructed by a convenient, tiltable grain tank window. We've even added a full-length right side door and window that provide better communication, cross-ventilation, and right side surface. A stadium lighting system, complete with long-distance lights, will keep you harvesting efficiently at nights, thanks to this array of blended halogen headlights, which eliminate hot spots. The optional right and left work lights, after-cut lights, and rear work lights all improve nighttime vision. Three optional service lights located on the left and right sides, and in the engine compartment, are handy for servicing your combine at night. The cab offers more than just a great view, however. An expanded interior and wider seat give you more space to spread out and be more comfortable during those long harvest days. When seated, you can easily adjust the controls to you. The seat controls are located in front for easy adjustment, while the steering column features both an upper and lower pedestal pivots. Attached to the seat is the right-hand console, which adjusts to the movement of the operator. The console is conveniently divided into four sections. Reel speed, separator and header controls, optional field tracker controls, and miscellaneous controls. Standard features on the console include an automatic reel-to-ground speed engagement and a parking brake that's automatically applied when the power is off. An automatic return-to-cut function allows you to preset the header to the desired height. Plus, you can adjust the concaves with this control. The propulsion lever, which puts six important tasks virtually in the palm of your hand, is located on the console. The palm rest can be easily adjusted to compensate for various hand sizes. With just the touch of your thumb, you can adjust the reel both forward and aft, or up and down to raise and lower the feeder, swing out the unloading auger, and engage the unloading auger. If you order the optional field tracker, it will be included with the feeder lift to give you four-way movements with the header. Open the armrest on the right side console and you can adjust the rates at which the header is raised and lowered, plus set the auto speed ratio control. Inside the armrest, you'll also find a convenient storage space for the owner's manual. The right post features a modern control panel with digitized displays. The narrow panel offers convenient access to important gauges, which doesn't limit your view. 13 air vents located on the front posts, beneath the seat, and above both doors circulate air evenly throughout the entire cab, so you receive air from head to toe. Getting in and out of an axial flow combine cab is now easier than ever, thanks to a sturdy operator's ladder with a solid bottom step. This ladder is truly unique as it can be pivoted forward for easy transport or pivoted up and to the rear when you're harvesting in muddy conditions. And in the event you hit something when the ladder is down, a special shear bolt serves as a safety device to prevent damage. Servicing is easy. A hinged feeder step provides easy access to the front window for cleaning. 
Extended handrails have been placed on the rear service deck. Steps and handles lead to the radiator door. Battery access is at ground level, and an optional toolbox is mounted on the left side of the frame. Located on the operator's deck is the grain tank access door that enables you to obtain grain samples without entering the grain tank. Shielding around the combine feature easy open, no tools needed hinged panels that reduce exposure to moving parts without compromise to serviceability. As an added safety feature, our operator presence system automatically shuts off the header height control and header drive within seven seconds after the operator has left his seat. There's also an optional straw and chaff spreader. This design delivers the chaff in with the straw, thus spreading total residue through the full width of cut, and it's all done without the use of additional hydraulics. The Axial Flow Combines are built with quality. When an Axial Flow Combine leaves this plant, the reputation of every employee goes with it. From the precision balancing of the rotor, to the high-tech assembly line, to the state-of-the-art electrostatic painting process, the East Moline facility is built around one of the most stringent quality control programs in manufacturing. No combine leaves this plant until it passes a vigorous and thorough final inspection. The Axial Flow Combine brings the future to your farm through innovative high technology. This Axial Flow features Case IH's exclusive advanced farming system. The advanced farming system gives you the technology you need to know precisely what every part of every field is producing. AFS produces the kind of quality data you need, no matter who's operating the combine, you or your hired help. Either way, you'll get reliable results for every field. The bottom line is that this 20th anniversary model of the Case IH Axial Flow Combine with AFS gives you control of your field, over your crops, and over your destiny that you've never had before. So we're getting the whole thing. The new 2100 series Axial Flow with the AFS, I can't wait. You'll have to excuse this son of mine. He talked me into an axial flow about 20 years ago. He has never let me forget it. <laughs> Daddy, we have to eat. I'm starving. I just had popcorn. Yeah, but farmers need to eat, right? Right. Well, the whole family's waiting at a table. Oh, great. Uh, hand her. This used to be granddad's. Hmm? Not anymore. Oh, come on. A little knot in this one so that the air can't come out, and here we've got it. Watch. A squiggle here, one over there, and oh, look at a potty chair! <laughs> Wait a minute, she doesn't like that, and I promise something special. And here we've got it just for you, a little honey bee for a little honey. And let's give this honey a great big hand for being a good sport. Now you eat your beans. Oh, you know Mr. Bosley down the road from us? Yeah. You're gonna hurt his feelings. So he's got a combine like we got? Well, he's had one for a while now, but we're getting a new one. That's why we came here, so we can see what it's gonna look like. But we don't farm beans. Well, the Axial Flow combines just about everything, including that rice that you like so much. And the corn in those chips. If you had a bad kernel in one of those chips, man, you'd know it. And the people who buy the corn from the farmers would know it too. They sure wouldn't buy it. Celebrating more than 150 years of serving the needs of farmers everywhere, Case IH is proud to present the 20th anniversary edition of the machine that revolutionized thrashing and separating of grain, the 2100 series Axial Flow Combine. And this Axial Flow Combine belongs to the Sawyer family. That one's ours? Yep. Surprise. Can we get closer? Let's do it. 
Congratulations, Daniel. Thank you, Terry. I don't believe it's been 20 years. Yep, 20 good years. I'll say. And I got better looking. <laughs> <laughs> that did too. Granddad, great granddad, it's ours. And I think we're going to need it, don't you? Absolutely. I can't believe it. They did everything they promised. I wonder what's next. Mister, that's what's next. I got something for you. It's your great great granddad's coin. What's it for? Good luck and better harvests. When it's my harvest, it's gonna be the best. 